Before we dive into the wonderful world of VTP modes, I did want to show you that I have moved Switch 2 back over to the uppercase CCNP domain. I did that off camera and I want to show you that. We got the same config message you know, or confirm message we got before about changing it from the domain name from this to this. And then we get a console message. What I wanted to show you is that a few seconds after doing that, about 10 seconds, you can expect to see the line protocol go down and then you should see it come right back up a few seconds later. That's what the VTP domain change. And then I just ran show switch twos, show VTP status. This is one of the two different outputs you could see. And we could see that it's running version two right now and it's running in the VTP domain name CCNP all uppercase, which is what we wanted. Also, it's running in the default VTP operating mode of server. Now on switch one, which is our switch that can run either versions one or two, you can see right here in the middle, there's the domain name and there's the VTP operating mode. So whichever one of these two outputs you see from this command, and I want you to see both of them, more for real world studies than anything else, it's really easy for you to see what the operating mode is. Now, let's take a look at iOS help. And I want to do VTP mode and these aren't the best descriptions you know there are times where ios help just gives you this phenomenal description of whatever you're about to do and it's telling us that client you're setting it to client mode server you're setting it to server mode and transparent you're setting it to transparent mode well did that change with uh, version 3 are we getting anything different here from the ios a little bit because now we have an off mode uh, but that's really it you're not getting a description <laughs> of any of the modes so we're about to go through those in detail uh, but I do want to point out now and we'll repeat in this video most likely that off is only available with version 3 it's not available on switches that can run only versions 1 or 2 it's got to be a version 3 capable server for you to do that now that we got all that out of the way let's talk about what these modes actually do and frankly why we care now in VTP server mode a switch can create delete and modify VLANs. Now create and delete of course those are pretty self-explanatory but modify that's a pretty wide open term. What we mean by that is pretty much change the name of the VLAN. We don't mean add ports to a VLAN because I, I've heard from a lot of students on that over the years it's like well you know am I not going to be able to add ports to a VLAN on a VTP client? Well, yeah, you will be able to, and you'll be able to in server, client, or transparent modes. Uh, we don't really consider that a modification of a VLAN. Uh, this also means, this rule means, that we have to have at least one switch in any given VTP domain running in server mode, or else we're going to just uh, not be able to create new VLANs. We can't delete previously existing ones. You're going to end up with a bunch of clients and transparents just sitting there looking at each other, and that's definitely not what we want. Now, switches running in VTP client mode cannot create, modify, or delete VLANs. Can't do it. Now, clients do listen for VTP advertisements, and they update their databases appropriately when those ads arrive. And we've got a lab on that coming up in this section. But right now, I want to show you what happens when you make a device a client. We get a little message setting device to VTP client for VLANs. That's fantastic. What happens if we try to create a VLAN on it? Eh, can't do it. VTP VLAN configuration not allowed when device is in client mode. You really can't do much of anything on a grander scale. You can just actually add ports to the VLANs that your client knows about. Now, take a deep breath because we're going to talk about VTP transparent mode. Switches running in VTP transparent mode are not fully participating in the VTP domain. Now, what I mean by that is they do not sync their VTP databases with other VTP-enabled switches in the same domain. When they get an advertisement, they're pretty much ignoring it. They don't even advertise their own VLAN information. So really, remember that great phrase, locally significant only? Uh, frame relay, Delsey numbers were like that. You know, we didn't advertise them anywhere, so they were locally significant only. Well, that's really what a VLAN is that you create on a transparent VTP switch. It's not advertised to anybody else. It's locally significant only. Now, this may seem a little counterintuitive uh, because transparent switches sound like they're not very helpful, and they, they can be in the right environment. 
but right now we just want to get the fundamentals down of what they are. And a transparent switch, when it receives that VTP advertisement, I mentioned that it was going to pretty much ignore it. It's not going to read it, but it will forward those ads out its other trunk links. So there's some definite getting used to, you know, servers are so cut and dried in their definition. Clients are cut and dried and then transparent. You've got all these things that transparent switches won't do, uh, but you do get used to it. Now the fourth mode, off, and I, I have trouble thinking of off as a mode. It's more like an anti-mode. But what you're doing, of course, is disabling VTP on the switch. Uh, and the switch is not going to forward VTP advertisements. And again, as we saw in the live equipment, if you're working on a switch that's capable only of versions 1 and 2, you don't even have that option because that mode came along with version 3 and is not available on previous versions. Now, talking about relaying, uh, another major difference between the modes is how they handle VTP advertisements. It's a little more detail about transparent switches because uh, it does get a little complicated. Surprise! Uh, VTP servers, they're going to originate VTP advertisements. They accept advertisements from other VTP servers and clients in the same domain. Again, we have to have at least one server in our domain or we've got a bunch of clients just looking at each other and transparent switches just ignoring each other. Now, VTP clients don't originate VTP advertisements. Um, they will send now, there isn't one exception. This is networking, we have to have an exception. Uh, there's one exception when a client first boots up and it's going to join a VTP domain, it will send one advertisement out. But the rest of the time, they don't originate ads, but they do pass them along. They're basically relay agents after they first boot up. Now, as you'd expect, VTP transparent switches are going to take a slightly more complicated approach. If your transparent switch is running VTP version 1, the switch will only forward incoming VTP ads only if the VTP version number and domain name is the same as those switches that would receive the forwarded advertisement. Right. <laughs> if that's the first time you've heard it, I'm sure it's making your head swim just a little bit. But if, you're, if your switch is running VTP version 1, that's the deal. Now, if the transparent switch is running version 2, that switch will forward the VTP advertisements via its trunk ports, even if the domain name of the downstream switches does not match. Okay, so that's some good information we do need to know about transparent switches. Now, what we're coming up on next is something a little lot more straightforward and, frankly, a lot more helpful, and that's the VTP advertisement process in the config revision number. Now, with the advertisement process, we've been, I've been mentioning VTP ads really since the beginning of this section, and we have three different kinds that we're going to look at in the next couple of videos, and we're also going to do a lab with this config revision number because this is a super important value. But the VTP advertisements themselves, they are multicast, and they are sent out only over trunk links. It's not one of those things that the switch just takes, you know, and just throws out every single port it has. And it makes sense to only send them out over trunk links because the only devices that even understand a VTP advertisement is another switch. You know, it'll send it over the trunks, but it's not going to send them to hosts. It's not going to send them out ports connected other router to routers. Nothing. The VTP ads are only going to go out over trunk links. Now, along with the domain name and some other information, but VTP advertisements carry a configuration revision number. And what this does, it enables VTP enabled switches to make sure they have the latest information and that they're not overriding their current VLAN database to make room for old information. Because let's say you've got a switch just kind of sitting there in your network and it gets a VTP advertisement from another device. Well, that receiving device, that receiving switch, has to have some way to say, okay, um, I'm going to take this incoming information as the latest and greatest, and I'll overwrite my current database info with the contents of this update. Or, you know, the switch has to, have, or I should say, and, and the switch has to have a way to say, okay, this information that just came in is older than what I already have, so I'm going to ignore it. And in our lab, we're going to see that uh, one of those two things happen. Now, I want to talk to you about the ad types real quick, or one type, and that's the subset advertisement. This is triggered any time there's a change in the VLAN landscape. Now, that change doesn't have to be a VLAN addition or deletion. It could be as simple as renaming a VLAN. 
and that may actually be what we do in the lab. We may do some addition and subtraction as well. Always like to do a little extra. Now, where to look for that configuration revision number on switch two? This is our version one two three capable, and our revision number is down here under feature VLAN. Again, regardless of which one of the two switch types or output types you're looking at, this is easy information to find. On our switch that's only capable of versions 1 and 2, it's going to be right here. So right now we've got 4 on one switch and 4 on the other. So right now we have a tie in the configuration revision. And the reason that is actually even incremented is I did add and create some VLANs before I started this taping so we'd have a non-zero value to look at. But that's where to look for this particular value uh, as shown here on the screens. Now what I'm going to do, it's going to be slightly different uh, from the study guide or anything else you're reading because the revision number there is set to 2. Here it's 4. And what we're going to do in the lab is do some creating and some deleting and see if these numbers change and when they change. So I'll see you on the next video and we'll dive straight into that lab.